So we've all eaten grapes and we've all drank wine. And we know that wine is made from grapes, but why do the two taste so different? There's really three main reasons why grapes taste different than wine. And they are the grapes themselves, the fermentation process, and the aging process in oak. Funny enough, I've made videos on all three of those topics. Moving on. So I'm not gonna to touch on fermentation and oak in this video. I'm just gonna talk about the grapes and how they turn into a delicious product we call wine. Let's get started. So the very first reason why grapes taste totally different than wine is because in grapes, there is a lot of sugar. In wine, there isn't much sugar. Most wines are dry, meaning they don't have any sugar. So all that sugar in grapes actually makes grapes uh, one of the unhealthiest fruit to eat because grapes have you know very high levels of sugar. So when you're eating grape, you're eating and consuming a lot of glucose and fructose, um, which is fine. It's better than eating you know a bag of Doritos or something. But still, there are other fruits that are healthier in a sense than grapes. And oddly enough, humans are really um, bad at tasting sugar. We need a lot of it to taste it. Um, that's not true of all animals. A lot of animals, some of them don't like sugar. Humans, we love sugar, but we need a lot of it in, in something to be able to taste it. That's why if somebody's drinking coffee and they pour a bunch of sugar in it, you need a lot of it to combat that bitterness of that coffee. Don't get me wrong, I like black coffee. But at very low thresholds, we can't taste sugar as humans. We need a lot of it to taste it. So that's why a lot of foods, Skittles, Starburst, are just jacked with sugar. Soda is jacked with sugar because we need a lot of it to taste it. But yeah, dolphins don't really like sugar. Otters don't like sugar. Uh, some roaches don't like sugar. Literally, some roaches find sugar appalling and they, you know, they had to change up the roach traps um, you know, back in the day because the roaches just weren't eating the sugar, they just didn't like it. But if you want to catch a bunch of humans, probably a sugar trap is a solid way to go. So again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not saying grapes aren't healthy. I'm just saying that they're very, very high in sugar and wine, on the other hand, is not because of the whole fermentation process. Again, check out that fermentation video that goes into way more depth on that topic. Okay, so how come when we taste wine and when we smell wine, we can smell dark chocolate or we can smell raspberry or we can smell maybe a touch of honey or we can smell pineapple? How does that all get into the wine? Winemakers are not adding any of those compounds into the wine. They're, they're already there in the grapes. It's just when we eat the grapes, we can't taste it because those chemical compounds are so small and there's so much sugar that our palates, we're not able to taste this tiny little thing because all we taste is sugar. So we just keep eating grapes. Oh, these are good, these are good, these are good. We taste the sugar, these are good, you keep eating more. But you're not being able to taste those teeny tiny little compounds that are also in the fruit. But when yeast come in during the fermentation process, they eat all that sugar, boom, all that sugar is gone and then all of these other little chemical compounds are floating around and then we can smell them and then we can taste them. So my analogy for this is if you're sitting in your room, pick something up, a remote, a pen, something. I had a stapler nearby. So imagine this stapler is the chemical compound that tastes like dark chocolate. Just imagine that that's a chemical compound. We can measure it. Imagine it tastes like dark chocolate, this little chemical compound. It is connected to me and imagine I am a glucose molecule, a sugar molecule. So what happens is the yeast come in and they eat me, boom, so I'm gone. And then this is just left floating around in the solution. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of these that are all floating around in the wine. Once all the sugar is out of the picture, there's all these little things floating around that we can then smell and taste that tastes like dark chocolate or dark cherry or maybe a little bit of raspberry or some honey or some pineapple. That's the main reason why wine tastes different than grapes. The other main reason and the obvious reason is all the ethanol that's in wine. That's not in grapes, okay? Grapes have no alcohol, no ethanol. Wine does. So yeah, I'll plug that fermentation video one more time, but real quick rundown. We start with grapes with all this sugar and the yeast go in there, they eat the sugar and they convert it to ethanol. So now the sugar's gone and the ethanol's really high. That's basically fermentation 101. My video goes into a lot more depth than that. But that ethanol that's in wine is a term that we call amphipathic, which means it has a polar end and a non-polar end. So in my components of wine video, 
Man, I'm plugging a bunch of videos in this video. Anyways, they all work together. In my Components of Wine video, I talk about how the most of wine is water. Water is polar, and think of this, oil is nonpolar. So oil and water don't mix, right? We, we kind of know that, We've seen pictures of oil on top and water on bottom, they're not gonna mix. That's because of the polarity of them. Oil is nonpolar, and water is polar. They're not gonna mix. As I just said, ethanol is amphipatic, which means it has a polar end and a nonpolar end because all those chemical compounds that smell like all those flavors I was talking about in wine, those are nonpolar chemicals. So basically they don't wanna mix with the water that's in the, in the wine. They don't wanna mix, they wanna get out. But the magical thing about ethanol is ethanol has a polar end and a nonpolar end. So it grabs onto the water and then it grabs onto the cherry compound or it grabs onto the honey compound or it grabs onto the dark raspberry compound or it grabs onto the bruised apple compound. It grabs onto all those compounds and holds it in solution because you can't just have all those chemical compounds in water. That's not gonna work, they're just gonna go away. They need that ethanol to hold onto both sides. It has a polar end that holds onto the water and a non-polar end that holds onto all those chemical compounds. So that's kind of a quick breakdown and I hope this video uh, helped in understanding why grapes taste different than wine. I wanted to keep this short and sweet. I didn't wanna dive way into it. I just wanted to kind of hit some of those main points that talk about why grapes and wine taste different. So now let's move on to our moon fact of the day. So this photo right here is the first photo ever taken where we could see the full image of the moon and the full image of the earth in one single frame. You know, we were always able to take, well not always, but since cameras, we were able to take pictures of the moon. We were never able to take pictures of the moon and the earth together though, because we were never outside of it. It was taken on September 18th, 1977 by the Voyager 1 spacecraft. A little fun fact about uh, Voyager 1 and 2, they're the same spacecraft. And actually, Voyager 2 uh, took off first. Voyager 1 took off second, a little counterintuitive. But Voyager 1 was on a faster path um, to the outer, outer planet, so it was going to get there faster than Voyager 2. So even though Voyager 2 took off first, Voyager 1 passed it up and got there first. So that's why it was named Voyager 1. Voyager 2 launched on August 20th, 1977. And Voyager 1 uh, launched on September 5th, 1977. And again, it took that picture on September 18th, just 13 days later. So where are these two uh, spacecrafts now? Well, they are hauling ass out of the uh, out of the solar system. Voyager 1 is about 13.6 billion miles away, and Voyager 2 is 11.3 billion miles away. Anyways, I thought this photo was kind of cool. It's one of the first times we ever saw, you know, the Earth and the Moon in full away from, you know, the you know both of us, where you just kind of see these two things just kind of hanging out there. I always kind of thought it was a an interesting and a neat and a cool photo kind of brings you know some perspective down anyways that's going to do it for me hope you enjoyed this video uh I plug some other videos maybe you've watched them before but if not uh click around on those and enjoy some of these more videos thanks for being a wine club member these videos are for wine club members exclusively any comments or questions uh, there's always three ways to get in touch with me there's a comment field down below a uh, little thing over here where you can send a message that goes directly to us or all of our email addresses are down in the footer as well so again that's it for me keep drinking wine and keep looking up thanks so much